Juno pretty much broke the game, and although they aren't nerfing her just yet, they are looking to make other heroes stronger. Edit includes the support heroes. With a lot of them being very bad for a long time, there are finally some buffs to look forward to. Let's get into the support tier list for mid-season 10. If you're looking to rank up on your favorite heroes, check out the link in the description below to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of guides and courses that can level up your game and help you get better, faster. Make sure to check it out and enjoy the video. Now that it's a very brawly meta, where no one dies unless you go in and one-shot them with speed. First up, despite getting a buff this patch, Life Weaver is now the worst support. He's still in C tier, so it's not that bad but it's very clear that his playstyle just isn't very helpful right now. Even with his healing output buffed over the past few patches, it's just his core abilities that don't help enough. He's a very solid hero now, but it's not what's needed to help teammates survive. Every part of his kit has been upgraded, so what's wrong? His pedal platform is way more dynamic, but it's still too slow. His healing output has been upgraded, but it's not enough burst. His life grip is his one saving grace though, it's very good. Especially in a meta where your tank can get overwhelmed and where pushing in very far can be the only way to get a pick. Life grip is very strong, so it's definitely pulling its weight. But given that Tree of Life is a static ultimate that can be easily kited from, he's just not fast enough to keep up right now. It's true that a lot of teams in low ranks will just fight each other and throw 6 ultimates at each other, but when teams are actually using Juno's hyper ring, it's really easy to fall back if an ultimate is used too early or if it's just an easy one to leave from, and Tree of Life is up there with the easiest to kite. On top of all the individual hero mobility and survivability that's in the game right now, there's nothing forcing players to stay in the fight against the ultimate. At least Life Weaver isn't a vulnerability for his team. He's still hard to kill, but besides his healing output, he's just not much of a benefit right now either. One step up to B tier, first we have Moira. She's a lot better though, despite being the second worst support. Recently, she's had a pretty big switch up. She's gotten more squishy with 25 less max health, but also deals more damage to compensate, both for her secondary fire grasp and now her coalescence damage too. Support ultimates are strong, and Moira's is no exception. The piercing damage and healing can break even the most defensive teams. And now that damage has been bumped up to 85 per second. It used to be 70, so it's a decent upgrade. Overall though, the move from Moira to more squishy with more damage isn't making her much stronger. Besides being a support that's hard to kill, she's always been best at healing rush teams as they go in, providing a massive amount of heals in an area, and having the mobility to keep up the pace with them. That playstyle plays pretty much the same, except that Moira has less health. It makes a big difference because she duels so often. Although her damage is going up, she's definitely more vulnerable with less health, even if she can fight attackers off slightly faster. Next we have Zenyatta. He's got a really meaningful upgrade this patch, that makes him way better despite not making him close to meta. Zen's always been a bit of a black sheep hero, unless he's super strong, so now the devs are moving him closer to the glass cannon identity, and it's a good choice. Such a small damage increase from 48 to 50 means that Zen's orbs now kill much faster. A full secondary fire charged shot, a 5 orb, now one shots 250 HP heroes if every orb hits. And with this corded headshots now buffed to exactly 125 damage, you can even 2 tap those same heroes. Zen's a way better duelist now. 5 orbs are difficult to hit, but they can kill now, so even his spam pressure is much more dangerous. Zen is still relatively easy to dive and shut down compared to other supports, but now he can actually take care of himself slightly. He also got his Discord cooldown nerfed. Now you can reapply it 6 seconds after instead of 7. 1 second is a very stingy buff to an underperforming hero, but it's better than nothing. So although Zen still has his biggest weakness of a square hitbox and zero mobility, he's more worth it now, and even his kick is more effective with a tank knockback reduction reduced. You can now save yourself a good burst of damage while dealing more at the same time. Next up in B tier is Iliari. Thanks to some damage nerfs to her and the recent damage buffs to Zen, they're pretty close now. Iliari barely comes out on top because she's a much safer pick. She has way more healing for her team and is harder to kill but she doesn't have as much damage pressure anymore. Even with a lot of heroes at 225 HP, the lower damage from her solar rifle makes her less impactful, and that's on top of the meta being more fast paced, forcing her to deal more effective damage before her team gets wiped. A Juno rush team just hyper rings and goes in, while Iliadi has to set up her pylon and poke enemies from an off angle to surround them and then top up her team. It's a fine playstyle between teams with no mobility, but Juno has changed that. Even Lucio is more capable of playing faster with his increased damage. At least Captive Sun is recently upgraded, but getting there is hard. You'll have to hit some clutch headshots to make her work above average, or you risk just being passive damage that can be ignored and healed up in a few seconds. And now at the top of B tier, it's Mercy. She takes the top spot mostly because her damage boost is now good enough to really amp up your team's performance. There's even a new effect that makes it much clearer when you're getting damage boosted. Compared to Iliari and Zen, who also have to focus on damage, she's not as direct. But she has easier value than Iliari and has more healing and survivability than Zen. Even her healing is really respectable now. It locks on quickly and can't be blocked by shields or matrix, so now that the heal per second is 60, it doesn't matter that it's a lower heal per second than the top supports. It's still enough to top up your team between the more important active damage boost. 
Now that it's 30% again, it even amplifies her ultimate a lot more. Juno's ultimate gives a 35% damage boost, and it's been very strong since she launched, so Mercy can also give her entire team a similar amount of damage increase. It means that Valkyrie isn't that bad compared to other support ultimates anymore, so at the very least she can punch up with some well-timed ultimates. Now moving up to A tier, first we have Baptiste. It's a rush meta with team stacking and speed pushing, so Bap does have a role to play but it really is just a bit too fast for him to be S-tier. He used to be super busted, but nowadays, his immortality field and regen burst won't help him survive a Juno hyper ring push easily. At least D.Va's been nerfed, who is definitely gatekeeping him the hardest, being able to chase after his exo boots easily. Outside of the top meta, he's as good as always. Sustaining the team is really easy for him. Only Juno rivals his high ammo counts for both poking and healing, but as for how his abilities fit into the pace of the game, he is lagging behind a bit. That's just how good Hyper Ring is. So as long as your enemies aren't taking advantage of it, he's more than good enough. Best in A tier is Anna. She's now the best support hero that isn't at the very top of the meta. She's clearly not best for rushing in, so instead she has a great matchup into the meta by denying heals and allowing her team to win the slow game with her heal output. And of course, going first is easy as well, with either an aggressive nade or nano boost, and both have great playmaking potential. Similar to Zenyatta, she has that glass cannon vibe with massive ranged pressure and burst and weak defenses up close. At least in Anna's case, she can play across the map no problem, and even if she does get pushed, a kamikaze anti-nade can help your team trade kills more than any other support can. Most games will be playable as Anna, but if you're looking to really abuse the best supports, we're moving on to S tier. First is Kiriko. Even when there's a dominant meta going on, Kiriko is still S tier. The cleanse doesn't have much to do since not even debuffs counter the top heroes but it still makes her a unique counter. So she's not just a consistent all-around DPS healer, she's a great pick to deal with Anna or Queen's anti-heal effects too. And although she doesn't have regular speed utility or AoE heals, her mobility makes her strong in any composition. She can keep up with rush and off-angle with dive and spam. The cherry on top is that Kitsune Rush is still busted. With how strong it is, it might as well be worth two ultimates. But even if she's still so capable, she's finally become killable after all this time. She has less health, has a longer teleport cooldown, and now there's even an extra source of speed utility to help chase her down. She's much easier to kill when she can't dart around as much, so keep that in mind. Next up, we have Lucio. Even with Juno in the lineup and way more popular, he's a great option to take the rush to the extreme. With a faster pace and constant pressure, Lucio's poke damage is great, and this patch made it better against tanks. He went from dealing 9 damage per bullet to armor a few patches ago to now dealing 15. Since he can constantly spam without losing any value, that damage adds up and makes Lucio more than just the rush guy, although he's still extremely good at it. Similar to Kiriko, he can do a lot in all types of comps. It can be hard to adapt, but switching between spamming out enemies constantly, helping a teammate on the flank, or speeding the front line forwards or backwards is a good place to start. Everyone benefits from enabling, and Lucio can get around fast. Second best in S tier is still Brig. She slots right into the new meta that's so hard to break. Nobody dies with how strong frontline tanks like Orisa and Ramatra are, which makes it super easy for Brig to play safely and heal everyone all the time. Armor may not be as busted anymore, but it's still the second best it's ever been, so 50 armor behind a shield isn't much easier to deal with. Rally is also coming in clutch for actually killing anything ever. With both teams just pocketing the tanks, the stun to make an opening is really easy to take advantage of, and on the other side, very hard to avoid. If you're still struggling with Brig, you might have to focus on a slower playstyle. There are a lot of opportunities to push forward and play with your tank for even more pressure, but if your team isn't experienced enough, it'll backfire as much as it would carry in a higher lobby. But even if you don't play aggressively, her healing output is still amazing, both her packs and her Inspire. And to finish off the tier list with the obvious top hero, it's still Juno. She's had a great start and the devs aren't in a rush to nerf her. Even with 25 less health, she's almost never in danger. Actively focusing her is hard. She can play from safe ranges and then quickly dart in for a torpedo volley without risking her life, and all while sustaining her team, setting them up with speed, and building her busted ultimate. The range of her healing is really making up for how squishy she is, since she can both play safely and heal as well as top up teammates on all parts of the map. Her ranged healing is almost as good as Anna's while having more mobility to position with. It just goes to show how good speed is. Even if it's not as fast as Lucio's amp, that's just 10% faster, it's easy to use with the ring deployment. It becomes really easy to engage fast and disengage fast. So in the top lobbies, not having a Juno is a pretty big handicap. It's safe to say that she's pretty much must pick level, even though there are a lot of viable heroes overall. Even in lower ranks where people don't take as much advantage of high level utility, she still takes the top spot with her constant team healing, utility, and survivability that finally culminates in the hardest ultimate to deal with right next to Kitsune Rush. No way to cancel it, a long duration and distance, and easy to farm. She definitely has gone too far, so a few nerfs in any part of her kit will let other heroes breathe some more. And that's it for the support tier list for mid-season 12. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.